with that in mind, let it be said that any entity propping up Mike Pence or Nikki Haley or any of these people is simply not on your side. And when Trump inevitably returns to power, they're going to pay for it by being cast out into irrelevancy and the trash bins of history where they belong. It's so true, folks. What's up, guys? Vince Dow here. So Mike Pence seems to be more or less trying to run for president, which is laughable and pathetic. But nonetheless, we're going to talk about it today. But first, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you are new. Okay, so this is a video that has been a long time coming because Pence has been taking these little pot shots at Trump for quite a while now. He disavowed Trump for the sixth. He came out and said that there is no room in the Republican Party for Putin apologists. Yeah, what's that supposed to be a shot at, Michael? But now it's really out in the open because he's been campaigning hard for Brian Kemp down in Georgia. Yeah, Brian Kemp. This is a very transparent F you to Donald Trump and all of his supporters who, as we all know, are currently trying to primary Brian Kemp. Isn't that interesting? Because I remember a lot of Trump supporters saying after the 6th that like, oh, Mike Pence was so loyal to Trump, he just disagreed with one thing that was over overturning the election and Trump threw him under the bus for it and that's kind of messed up because Pence is still a good guy and Pence was very loyal to Trump. Hmm. I wonder where that argument is now because it seems to me that we were pretty vindicated in disowning Mike Pence because what is he now doing? What is he doing? Literally associating with the very worst people in the Republican Party. He's literally proving right now that he was not and never was on our side. You see, if the argument was that Pence really did support Trump and MAGA besides that one thing he could be proving that right now. I'm not saying that he'd have to personally associate with Trump because I understand that wouldn't be realistic, but if he really believed in MAGA, like a lot of you people say, he could at least be verbally supporting the broader cause that we stand for right now, which is to say at least getting behind some of our candidates or even just saying a word or two about Trump supporters and our movement, or at the very least, Mike Pence could just go dark. He could just go quiet. He could just shut up and not get in our way but instead what is Mike Pence doing he is actively counter signaling us he's directly campaigning against a Trump endorsement he is out here shilling for anti-Trump foreign policy he's associating with a bunch of anti-Trump clowns and by the way this is who he was before he was vice president Mike Pence has always been a neocon he was never on our side and say what you will about the circumstances that it came under but I am incredibly glad that that was unmasked to the world and if you are a Trump supporter I don't care about how you think he did it, but how can you not say at this point that Trump disowning Mike Pence was not a completely vindicated and good decision? Because had this not happened, Pence would have been the logical decision to secede Trump's movement. Has anyone thought about that? He was Trump's vice president. He was basically second in command to take over the next presidential nomination and basically take over the movement. And imagine how much of a disaster that would be. That would be H.W. Bush 2.0. So thank God. God that this did not happen. So with that said, it seems pretty clear that Mike Pence is doing all of this currently to flirt with a run for president. And he openly said that he would be open to running for president, presumably against Trump in 2024. But let's talk about this because we all know that this is laughable. Okay, Trump is running in 2024 and he is going to destroy Mike Pence. We know this. And even if Trump doesn't run, Mike Pence will still fail miserably at trying to get the Republican nomination. But the effort, I will say, to prop him up should not go unnoticed. You see, right now we are watching the pre-Trump Republican establishment basically trying to get rid of Trump. You see a lot of establishment Republicans trying to build distance from him. You have the National Review openly advocating for someone other than Trump in 2024. The Young America's Foundation, or YAF, which is basically like the establishment rival of TPUSA, is literally doing this Mike Pence college tour. Say what you will about turning point, but at least they're in touch enough to not do stuff like that. You have PragerU doing a gazillion different videos with Nikki Haley, and it's like, okay, we see what is happening here. The neocons are trying to set up a coalition to oust Trump and get their own person in 2024. 
They don't know yet if that's Mike Pence or Nikki Haley or someone else, but they clearly want someone. Now, that one National Review article did mention one valid point, which is that there is a somewhat decently sizable minority in the Republican base that actually does not want Trump in 2024. I will concede that. But here's the problem. Who do most of the anti-Trump 2024 people want? Ron DeSantis. Obviously, that is the only significant faction in the conservative base other than Trump 2024 is Ron DeSantis 2024. And I would argue that even the DeSantis crowd is not really as big as people make it seem. I mean, I live here in Florida and I don't even see DeSantis 2024 stuff. It's all Trump 2024. But regardless, that doesn't even matter because Ron DeSantis is not going to be running against Trump. We know this. You can take that to the bank. Now, the strategy of these neocons seems to be to create a sizable rift between the Trump people and the DeSantis people, and then unite the DeSantis people with the establishment candidate like Pence to create a sizable coalition. Does that make sense? You see what I'm saying there? Now, here's the problem with that. Most DeSantis people are not going to vote for Mike Pence or Nikki Haley. Because outside of Twitter and DC, most actual DeSantis 2024 people support him because they think he's a better version of Trump for whatever reason. They think he's more polished or he's younger or he's more electable. By the way, I disagree with that assessment. But regardless, this is important to recognize. Most DeSantis 2024 people still like Trump and still support Trumpism even if they ne don't necessarily want Trump to be the candidate. They see DeSantis as an extension of Trump, not a rebellion against him. Most of them still see Republicans who go against Trump as rhinos. These are still relatively MAGA people. They're not going to get behind some weak anti-Trump Republican. And when push comes to shove, in that primary in 2024, I guarantee you, they're eventually going to come home to us and not the neocons. And that's the truth. And if it wasn't screwed already, any attempt to oust Trump in the primary is completely screwed without the DeSantis faction. You need those people. Because besides that, who really wants Mike Pence for president? Do you know any real human being that wants Mike Pence or Nikki Haley for president? Yeah, I didn't think so. These people are going to fail. But with that said, I am very grateful that they are showing their true colors because these are entities that really grifted off of the Trump wave when he was president. And they got a lot of the Trump base to believe them and go along with them. But now that he's not in power, they really think that this is their opportunity to rift from him. They think this is their opportunity to retake power. So with that in mind, let it be said that any entity propping up Mike Pence or Nikki Haley or any of these people is simply not on your side. And when Trump inevitably returns to power and institutes dark MAGA as the official policy of the United States, remember every single entity that spat in his face. Because the veil is off. They showed their hand too early and peacefully speaking, they're going to pay for it by being cast out into irrelevancy and the trash bins of history where they belong. It's so true, folks. I already know what's going to happen, by the way. If Brian Kemp wins his primary tonight, which he honestly might, I hate to say that, but he might, and that's only because David Perdue has run a terrible campaign, Mike Pence is going to declare that a victory, and they're going to tout this as proof that Trump is waning and the establishment is winning back power, which they're clearly not. I mean, when you look at all the other America First candidates who won big over the past few months, but... You know, their one victory, their one victory over Trump is apparently proof that it's so over for Trump. Yeah, okay. Yeah, keep talking. Keep talking. You're going to regret it, guys. I'm telling you, we will win. White pills only. America first is winning the ideological battle for the American right as of right now, which I'll talk about in a video a little bit later this week, and white pills only because we are back in Florida, okay? We are now back in Florida. California was a nightmare, I have to say. Part of the reason the content was so slow there was because it I just couldn't do it. It just sucked. It was demoralizing, but we're back. We're back. By the way, New York City, epic APU event this Saturday featuring myself, Curtis Sliwa, Mike Crispy, Gavin Wax, Monster Z, and a virtual address from Andrew Giuliani. Tickets in the description. Again, that's this Saturday, Memorial Day weekend. Bring your friends. New York City. It's going to be epic. But yeah. Anyways, okay, guys. See you guys later. Uh, sub if you're new. Alpha moves only. God bless and peace. Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo as long as...